to your health this morning, 638 now. An ingredient used in thousands of foods and things that aren't really food, candy, even, well, cereal too, Dr those drink cherries, uh, right? Uh, those things will soon no, no longer be allowed. We showed you yesterday the FDA's decision to ban red dye number three. It's a color additive made from petroleum that gives foods and drinks a bright red color. Now we're taking a closer look at the danger. Health reporter Haley Hernandez spoke with experts about this. Yeah, what red dye three does to our bodies has been under investigation. And here's what's now been decided. For decades, the FDA has been insistent that food color additives are safe. But in recent years, there have been many prominent health leaders who claim otherwise. And this week, the proof is in the new policy. All food manufacturers must reformulate foods by January 2027, giving them time to get the red out. The concern with red dye comes from really out of the animal studies that showed that it can cause uh, thyroid tumors in rats is what it showed. But we see that with a lot of different food dyes, there's also neurobehavioral issues that are of concern that, you know, it can impact kids' behavior and neurological function. Cancer concerns is why several states already ban red dye 3 and why it hasn't been used in cosmetics since 1990. So why has it been available for human consumption in the food supply for an extra 30 plus years? They were supposed to go back and uh, revisit the issue for, you know, the food industry, but they just never did. So until there's more regulations against questionable additives, Ashley Smith says it is important to stick to whole ingredients and get serious about avoiding processed foods. That was a big one that came up at Christmas, you know, doing cocoa bars at my kids' school. Marshmallows, you know, a lot of mainstream marshmallows to make them that bright white they're adding food dyes. And normally that's a blue food dye to kind of give them that color, but it's it's not always where we think it would be. Food dyes don't offer any nutritive value. They're not acting as a preservative. They're not doing anything for our food other than making it more visually appealing. And as a pediatric dietitian, when these ultra processed foods are very marketed to children, it's, it's making it really difficult to put wholesome nourishing foods on a level playing field because we're making these other ones just so enticing to kids. Yeah, and it's making, it's reassuring us that we have to read the label that bright red color is not always an indicator that the red dye is inside. For example, according to allrecipes.com, red dye number three is in candy corn, like you see here mm. behind me, uh, Betty Crocker cookie and mashed potatoes mixes, those aren't red, wow. and Walmart brand cookie mixes. So the red color alone isn't going to indicate that, that it's in there. Right. You have to read the label. Yeah. Okay, that's really good. Uh, what about the the things that you already have at home. Should we just get rid of them, throw them out? It, well, Smith says that maybe as you run out and maybe you can replenish with some healthy alternatives now that you have this knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. But she says not to fear or stress too much because obviously that's stress and, you know, like panicking can also have health implications. So really, she says just role model for your kids, a healthy relationship with food, everything in moderation, maybe small portions every once in a while, you know, with Valentine's Day coming up, Easter coming up. A lot of red candy. are still going to be, yeah, exactly. There's <laughs> yeah. going to be readily available for our kids. So maybe just enjoy it a little bit and know that it's like a one-time holiday experience, okay. treat, you know? Okay, that's It'd be good. hard to replace candy corn. I guess I figured that one out. Yeah. Thanks, Haley. I'll find a way. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs>